Great light to shine. 
Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Let the King of Glory come in. Come on, lift up your voices and give him a good praise in this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Marcy. We welcome you to Dove Church today. If you are visiting with us, we welcome you to our house today. Thank God for your presence. We thank you for those that tune in to us by way of whatever social media. Uh, we're glad to receive your comments. We thank you and we encourage your, your love gifts. Send an offering uh, to propel this ministry forward in, in reaching out beyond the four walls of this church. And we thank God for what he does. And we pray that he would return it in kind to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And we just believe that God can do anything. That in, in an economy that might be shifting and changing, he will provide. He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Amen. And, 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 and he's our El Shaddai because he's more than enough. Amen. He's more than enough. How many of you know that for real? He's more than enough. He supplies for us. The Bible says that he is our daily bread. Amen. And so no matter what happens, you got some new stuff coming tomorrow. Amen. You got it today, you got it yesterday, and you got it coming tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so we bless you today, and we thank you. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand. Amen. Amen. Or wherever your Bible is, on whatever device, your iPad, your phone. Repeating after me with good voice, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you and we adore you and we magnify you. We declare there is none like you. We thank you for this opportunity to brag on you again. Now, Holy Spirit, guide us into what your mind will want us to know in this hour, in this time. God, we just don't want a good message. We want a transformative message that changes our heart, moves into our behavior and activity. And we ask it all, believe it, we receive it in Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Today, continuing along the same vein that we were in last week talking about the Holy Spirit, we're going to return back to the Garden of Eden and then we're going to come forward again, just on another street, kind, so to speak. And, and today's message is the Holy Spirit and koinonia. And I'm going to spell koinonia for you. It's K-O-I-N-O-N-I. Koinonia, K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A, Koinonia. And I'm going to spend good time explaining what, 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 what that's all about. The Holy Spirit has several specific assignments as it relates to the kingdom of God. We limit it in our day and age to just tongue speaking, but it's more than that. It came to do more than that. It came to do more than that in the garden, and it came to do more than that in Jerusalem at Pentecost. Amen? First, what were some of the things it came to do? And this is just a rundown, a brief one. To fill the believer with power, enabling them to witness. You have power 
to witness. So when people say, I can't witness, you're not telling the truth unless you don't have the Holy Spirit. Then you don't have power to witness. And that power means to, you don't have power to be effective with backup. The Holy Spirit is your backup. How many of you got backup today? The next thing the Holy Spirit does is provide a prayer and praise language enabling spiritual communication. The Bible says God is a spirit. So if God is a spirit, we need spiritual communication with him. So we speak to him with tongue and we also worship in that language. We do war in that language. And the way that you know that you are filled is that you speak. So if somebody asks you if you're filled, you can't just say, yeah, I'm filled. Is there an evidence for the filling? Yes. Yes. And the evidence is that you speak in tongue. Yes. So if I walked up to any of you and you say, I speak in tongue, that means if I say speak, you can do it now. Amen. 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 How many you know I'm right? Amen. You can do it now. And the next thing is to be filled with the Holy Spirit means that you can communicate with other languages. That means without a previous knowledge of being fluent in another language, if the Holy Spirit wants to speak through your filled self, it can cause you to speak in another language to somebody that needs to receive ministry. We have account after account of people that the Holy Spirit prompted them to say something to somebody, but they said it in tongues, uh, 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 and, and, and that, those are the other tongues that happened on the day of Pentecost. Everybody heard their own language. Amen. 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 The unknown tongues is your prayer language and your praise language, and I'll, I'll dare say your war language. Amen. How many of you war in the Holy Spirit with your language? See, see, your, your, your prayer language isn't always the same. Da, 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 da. He, ka, 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 ka. Sometimes it's, ra, shoko, shike, ra. You get, and then sometimes it's quite sweet. Hallelujah. It depends on what kind of devil you're fighting. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some things demand more. Tap somebody and say, some things demand more. How many know I'm right about that? How many know when you shouldn't get in trouble, it comes out like you need to do something with it? It don't come out like, oh, could you just leave us alone? No, it doesn't come out. And the last thing that I want to mention that, that's crux to this message is that the Holy Spirit comes to bring unity to the body of Christ. Amen. It comes to bring what? Unity, Unity to the body of Christ. Amen. And that's why sometimes I don't understand when the church is supposed to be unified is the most divisive place almost on the earth. I don't understand how you can be prejudiced and be a Christian. How you hate black folk and be a Christian or hate white folk and be a Christian. Not when you, you speak with tongues and you're filled full of the Holy Spirit, but yet you can't get along with anybody. You're ill-tempered because you don't understand that the Holy Spirit comes to promote fellowship. Fellowship in what? How we love each other. That's the sign to the world. Amen? Amen. When they see you, after the church was filled full of the Holy Spirit, they had all things common. That means if, 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 if Marcus needed something, he could get it. And then in return, when somebody else needed something, he could give it to them. They had all things common. It might be, I need the shirt today. No, I, I, you know, I'm cool. You pass it along. Do you need it? Yeah, I need it today. They had to all things in common. That's, that's when you feel full of the Holy Spirit. You're unified in giving. You're unified yes, yes. in what, what the Holy Spirit has, has come to help you do. 
I think it is a waste of the Holy Spirit just to come to fill you so you can speak in tongues. It's greater than that. It comes to lead you, comes to guide you, comes to help you be better. Ooh. You feel full of the Holy Spirit, you can't be the meanest person in the block. You might be mean for a little bit, but but get it together. Because flesh is still on us. Touch it. It's still on you. It's still on you, isn't it? Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So you want to say, God, Pastor, this is this too hard to, to, we can't live like this. No, the Holy Spirit came to make it livable. Because there is a higher living that you must have. The church must be on a higher living plane. It can't be sloppy agape. It can't be sloppy love. It's got to be intentional. Are you there? Amen. Don't tell me you love me and if I'm hungry, I can't get a bite to eat. Love me through service. Yes. Yes. <laughs> love me through service. Yes. How many of you know you can minister to somebody real good when you meet a need? Amen. Yes. Then they know immediately from you that the Lord is good. Yes. Amen. Amen. You have the ability, Lord, I'm so off of this, I don't know what to do. You have the ability to change somebody's testimony instantaneously. You can change it. I was thinking one way about what folk in the Lord do, and now because of you, I'm, I'm seeing different now. You changed it. By a simple love act. And don't look for nobody to turn around and tell you you thank you. Sometimes we want to be pat on the back for every little thing we do. But if you get that, that's all you get. Look for your reward from the one that can keep giving rewards. Who says my reward is with me. Come on, that's, that's who you look for the reward. They don't ever say thank you. Amen. See, planet. And sometimes we need to give that way with a forget-me-not on our mind. I, yeah. I, 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 I'm done. Yeah. Don't keep agonizing over your giving. Amen. Oh, Lord, woe is me. Amen. 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 Now, turn to, let, let me say this. Cornelia, I've told you how to spell the word, means fellowship. It means fellowship. It means joint participation. Joint participation. It is a gift jointly shared. It's as if Pastor Marcy, myself, and Emily sitting on this first row are, are in Cornelia because we're jointly sharing a gift. It's like we're, 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 we're holding hands, but we're not holding hands, but we're jointly sharing a gift. Amen. What gift are we jointly sharing? The Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. Jointly sharing. Does that make sense? Yes. To further express this thought of Cornelia is... Intimate spiritual fellowship. So koinonia is not just grouped together. It is spiritual fellowship. It is spiritual fellowship that leads to spiritual community. We're a church, but we're a community. We commune together. Along our gifting area, because we are all filled, we have one thing in common, and that is that the Lord sent the Holy Spirit to make us one. Yes. Yes. You're not two, you're one. Yes. I'm not against you, because being against you will be against myself. Yes. We're one. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. 
That sure take the fight out of us when we want to come against people. We want, and everybody stay woke. First John 5, 7 through 8. If you feel yourself dozing, start, get a Bible, start thumbing through the scriptures. Find them as I. First John 5, 7 through 8. We're going to show you that that spiritual cornelia started in heaven. And it was it came to earth. It was in heaven and earth. Jesus prayed as it is on earth as it is in heaven. So God wanted earth to mirror. Amen. 1 John 5, 7 through 8. Does your Bible say, for there are? All right. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. Three people, in, three beings in community. The Father, the Word, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are? What? Is that community? The three are one. And then he changes it and he moves to the earth and he said, there are three that bear witness on the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as on earth as it is in I'm going to explain more about that cornelia fellowship. But let me say that. The act of cornelia does not occur just because a group comes together. A mob is a group. A gang is a group. But they are not spiritual fellowship. They come together for one, one purpose. To rob, to kill, to destroy To take something from somebody. Ooh. It's not spiritual fellowship. How many know I'm right about that? A mob of praises on Palm Sunday is not fellowship. Even though they were crying Hosanna in the highest. Because that same mob's agenda changed that next week. And that mob cried, crucify him. Yeah. Come on. So a mob is not spiritual fellowship. <laughs> the United States Congress is a group of people with similar missions, I think. For the good of a nation, supposedly. It looks like Cornelia Fellowship, but it is not. It is impossible to have spiritual fellowship without the Holy Spirit. How do you say you are led by the Holy Spirit and you disenfranchise people? See, there's something above the vote. It's called the Holy Ghost. And they were led of the... That's even on the Supreme Court. The Holy Spirit is a part of the great cornelia of heaven with God and Jesus. Here is a key statement. God related the heavens and the earth. He related them. That means he put them together. They're relational to each other. Man didn't know how good he had it in the garden. And anytime you don't know what you have, you will abuse it. 
If you don't understand who you are, you will, you will abuse it. If you don't understand the blessing of youth, you will abuse it. You'll abuse it. Because you think where you are is where you always going to be. Well, skip to the nursing home. They used to be young, vigorous. But their old chest size is not a waist size. And they aching in places because there was a day when you didn't hurt. Okay, come on, I'm going to help somebody. You didn't hurt, no. Anybody remember them days when you didn't hurt? You hurt if you bumped into something. I fell down and hurt. But dusted off, got, got them, kept going. I used to could just pack for a trip and just throw clothes in and keep on going. Now I pack, you know, this medicine kit, that, this. There's some bottles you must take with you. And those other little things that help you get through the day. Oh, y'all looking at me like I'm great. I'm going to come on this side because they, they ain't looking as bad. There was a day when I could wear any shoe I wanted to. I just put it on my feet and kept on stepping. Amen. Some of you all have high heels you'll never wear again. They just, they just for show. You pull them out and do this, child. And you're too low down to give them away. Talking about one day I'm going to get back in on Turn to somebody and say, let go of the fantasy. Let go of the fantasy. <laughs> See, some of y'all don't believe Dr. Scholl's going to, you know, George is going to give way to Dr. Scholl at some point. Do you understand what I'm saying? Man didn't know how good he had it. Genesis 1, 1 and 2. Let's, let's talk about how God established the cornea fellowship. How, how he did it. How he operated with it. And, 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 and let, let's see the, when the cornea fellowship came in. And, and I want you to see a distinction. That the majority of creation, God did it, the Father, by himself. By himself. Genesis 1, 1 and 2 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Who created it? God. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the spirit of who? God. Was hovering over the face of the water. So who did it? God. All right, all right. But the spirit of Cornelia Fellowship does not enter into the world as it relates to created being, uh, being man until Genesis 1.26. Go down. And then we get a different verbiage. He says, let us. He didn't say, let us make the world. <laughs> because the world is not God's image. <laughs> the world is not God's image. He said, let us make man in our... And that's the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The koinonia of heaven, the community. And he said... According to our likeness. Yes. Yes. And see, see, if, if it if became our likeness, it means that they have dominion. Yes. 
over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. You got dominion over creeps. That's what the Bible says. If you're listening at me. The entire spiritual heavenly cornelia came together with their part in the community, the spiritual community, to make man in their image. So what you are is who God is. That's how bad Adam was in the garden. He was so bad that God walked and talked with him. In the garden. And I'm going to say something else wild. You may not believe this, but I think Adam had access to both heaven and earth. Because the garden looked like heaven. And heaven looked like the garden. And man looked like God. And God looked like If you don't know what you got, you will give it away. And somebody will come up and try to talk you out of it. When you don't know who you are, you're distracted by everything because you don't think I'm important enough to spend some time figuring out who I am. See, what you're trying to do ain't who you are. It's just what you're trying to do. (laughs) So Satan keeps you trying to do something all the time instead of being who God made you to be. And he made you good. He made you bad. Oh God. Man was always meant to be like the cornelia fellowship of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And again, he had perfect fellowship with God. Genesis 2, 15 through 18. I got to run on. I'd love to, to hit that point some more. But 2, 15 through 18. <laughs> then God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. Notice that the word work is not used. How do you tend and keep something without working? Did Adam have sweat glands? Did, did, did. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, did he talk to him? Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. That means when he gave that commandment, he said, I'm going to give you a tree. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm going to give you a helper. Somebody to walk out this thing with. Because it's not good for you to be by yourself. Because at some point, you've got to make the whole earth like the garden so we got to establish community. And you need her to make community. Y'all necessary. We can't be in community without you. Girl, you necessary. You necessary. See, that's why you can't let anybody abuse you because you're key to the community of God. You have purpose and you have worth. I'm building community. That's why you want your kids saved. You don't only want them well educated, you want them saved. Because to be well educated and unsaved, why are you preparing them for hell? 
You don't need a PhD for hell. It's not culture but community. And we want to trump culture. Excuse the use of the word. I, For spiritual community. And that's what they need to be taught how to walk in. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the thing that I've sent to help the community to function. Are y'all out there? Then Satan seduces, and you know the whole story. But then Genesis 3, 8, and 9 gives us the evidence of severed cornelia or severed spiritual fellowship. Now, up until this time, Adam was full of the Holy Spirit. He was so powerful that whatever he said happened. God said, whatever you name stuff, that's what his name going to be. Dominion means you got authority. You just say, cow. Are you out there? Here comes the evidence of the severance. Genesis 3, 8 and 9. Something interesting in the, in, in the wording here. It says, and they heard... The sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife, make no error, they weren't, you know, shacking up. That was his wife. And God was the clergy that married them. Hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Everybody say hid themselves. From the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the God. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? First of all, the Bible says, and they heard the sound of the Lord. They knew the Lord's sound, but why did you just hear it when before you usually, you usually talk to him face to face? And now you're only hearing. See, when you mess up in sin, you, 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 you lose the, the sensitivity of presence. <laughs> you can hear some things, but you ain't dealing face to face no more. And then furthermore, God who was walking with you and talking to you, giving you uh, 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 orders and telling you what to do and what not to touch and all that, I could just see that picture. He asked a crazy question. Where are you? Y'all don't even see that, do you? When the Lord has to send out a locator for you, Because you moved. Where are you? Something changed about us. <laughs> you, you, something, something changed about us. What, 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 what happened? I, I, uh, uh, why are you behind the bush? You never needed it before. What, 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 what's holding you back now? What, you, you, uh, you, uh, you, I gave you dominion over the bush. I didn't give bush a dominion over you that you would need it for shelter and covering. Two point. Number one, Adam hears what he wants walk with. Two. Absent from spiritual koinonia caused God to ask Adam, where you at? The fellowship was broken. 
So thus happens the redemptive plan of God to get us saved, but to start restoring God benefits back. So from Adam all the way down to Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was an upon experience. It was upon Saul. It was upon David. It was upon uh, uh, the prophets. It was upon this man of God. It was upon them. And it, they were moved by. But it was not in them. What God did at Pentecost, he had already did in the garden. Ooh. So Pentecost is a repeat of God's original purpose for man. Are y'all out there? John 17 and 11. And Jesus keeps giving us God's desire. It's all speaking to the Cornelia Fellowship, spiritual fellowship. John 17, 11. Are you there? And this is in, 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 in your Bibles, it's in the red letter section. It's in red letter. And it says, now I am no longer in the world. That's Jesus. But these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be, you read the last four words. One as we are. So Jesus was echoing the plan of God from the beginning. God, I'm asking you, make them one as we are one. Then Jesus says this in Luke 24:49, and I'll, I'll be reading from the Passion Translation. He said, just to help restore you back. Now, mind you, he's already died on the cross, was resurrected. The redemptive plan is set. You can be saved now, but you still don't have the infilling. He said to them, I will send the fulfillment of the Father's promise to you. So stay here in the city until you are clothed with the mighty power of heaven. The Holy Spirit. Stay here and wait on it. That's the only time you needed to tarry for the Holy Spirit. Is that time he told him to wait. Nobody else needed to tear. All you need to do is receive. Amen. Acts 1, 4 through 5. New King James. And he said there, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. So it's echoing Luke. Verse in, in 2449. He said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Yes. My God. Woo. God is riding the ship. Yes. Yes. This filling was necessary as it was and is the only thing that could cause unity in the body of Christ, the church. The unity would cause men to see our love and fellowship with the Lord and each other and want to be saved. So they had all things common. They shared. They loved. They didn't hate each other. 
They weren't prejudiced. There were all colors in the church. Come on. Come on. They were a community. And, and you know what they did? They became a catalyst for those that were coming to, into the kingdom of God. They were such a catalyst. And why I turned around in the circle? Because a catalyst is, is, is energized. So everything it touches is transformed. And it would be recorded that 3,000 were added to the church. Because they were unified. Because they didn't see color, they saw somebody that needed the Lord. And they got them saved, then they got filled. And it happened all through Acts, they got filled again. Then they got filled again. And the church went all over the ancient world. Because they were one. Lord, make us one. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, make us one. Whoever it is, make us one. It's fellowship time. It's fellowship time. I'm in fellowship with y'all. I don't have time to hate y'all. I'm in fellowship with you. We might have an argument, but we ain't falling out forever. Because it's fellowship. Come on. And your fellowship is greater than your ills and your little agenda. Blessings to you today. If you heard our message today, we trust you heard a word that helps you, will benefit you and get you to the next place. Again, we just don't want good messages. We want transformative message. That we know who we are in Jesus Christ. That we know how much God loved us by what he gave us from the beginning. And that he is the great redemptor, And he restores all. Our psalmist said it this way. He restores my soul. He puts it back. In a lovely place. So if you're not saved today, you heard this message. Surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow me in this confession. Repeat it after me as we say it here in the auditorium. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I give you my life. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Today I believe in a miracle. I believe one day you died on the cross. And on that third day, you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. And on that confession, and with that faith, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. And now the church is going to celebrate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Find a good church, good Bible teaching church that explains to you the will of God for your life. It's not enough just to repent, but you've got to not only turn around, but grip the Word of God with your whole life. Grip it. It's the thing that will keep you. It's the thing that will remind you what you had then, what you got now, and what you can look forward to in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together and give God a good praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many glad you came to church today? Anybody heard something good today? Yeah. Let's get back to eating. So we can sit on top of the world. You are eating nights. I know some of you thought you were heathen nights, but you eat nights. 
get back to Eden. Praise the Lord to all of our viewers. We thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.